Welcome to the channel, everybody. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the Taurus G3. Now, I've got a bunch of requests and a ton of questions when it comes to the Taurus name and specifically targeting the new G3 and the G3C. Now, this is the first Taurus I've ever personally owned. I've had a chance to shoot the G2 series, but this is my first experience with the G3 and the G3C. I bought both of those. The Taurus G3, I was able to pick up for $240 in December of 2020. 240 bucks, that is a pretty spectacular deal. And the Taurus G3C was 253. So for under $550, I walked with a G3 and a G3C in December of 2020. That is a pretty solid deal. Now the questions I get all the time out there, is it reliable? Is it worth looking at for home or self-defense? And we are definitely gonna get into that and the ammo that I ran through it and the trigger. And I'm definitely gonna explain how the trigger works in here because it's quite a bit different. If you don't know, the Taurus not only has your regular striker fired setup right there, not bad, but it has a restrike capability. Okay, so it's almost like the double action, single action thing. And it's really interesting how it is set up in there. More of that when we get up close here in a minute. And I know some of you may have a bunch of experience out there with the Taurus brand. I do not. And if you do, specifically the G3 or the G3C, definitely let us know your experiences down in the comments. The thing, again, is coming back into a sub $300 or $240 pistol in the case of this Taurus, functionality and reliability. One of the things we need to understand right up front is not everybody is as fortunate as me or you or another person. They may not have the ability and or time to go out and save up or buy a Glock 19 or an M&P. Remember, those are double or triple the price of this thing, but we still want people to have access to something that is reliable should the time come that they ever need to actually deploy it. Having had hard times in my own life before, I remember having to make a decision between gas in the tank or groceries. So I can completely understand and sympathize only having 250 bucks to spend on something. And people's right to self-defense is just that. It is an absolute right, either given by God or whatever you believe in, but everybody should have the opportunity to have some form of self-defense. And we need to keep into mind that not everybody is gonna be able to make a larger purchase. So this is definitely something worth looking into. And that's why I really wanted to get it out on the range and run this thing exactly like I would test anything else from a Glock to an M&P. Now there are definitely a couple things that you need to do this prior to taking it to the range the first time. One, if you get one, get in there, clean that thing out extremely thoroughly, probably twice in two days. So clean it once, oil it, let it sit, and then clean it again the next day. I found a substantial difference between doing that the first week that I had this, and then do a bunch of dry fire, dry fire excuse me, to get used to the difference in the feel of that trigger, as far as the restrike thing goes, we'll get more into that later, but doing that cleaning, a lot of racking that and you know activating that trigger is going to make the range experience out there a lot better. I will also add that after that second range trip, it literally was like a different feeling setup out there. It was far smoother and ran a lot better out there as far as the grit feeling of it and can just count how it felt overall out on the range. Well, we're gonna talk about how I ran this thing, what I did, go over the range footage, talk about the ammo that went through there, and then of course my overall feelings on this because this is far, this is probably the cheapest pistol that I own at this point in time, which doesn't necessarily make it a bad one. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel, definitely turn the bell notification icons on and give this video a like. Let us know down below, like I said, if you have any experiences with Taurus, specifically the G3, because I am very interested to hear what everybody else out there is doing with them. We're gonna go ahead and get into the specs on this thing right now. All right, let's go ahead and rock and roll with this Taurus G3 right here. Let's go over the basic specs on this. You're gonna see I have two different magazines. One is going to be the 15 rounder and the other one is going to be the 17. So Taurus does market this as a full size, but we'll compare it to a 19 because it's much closer to that right off the bat. So it is a Tenefer finish here on the slide. I think I might've called that Parkerized. It's Tenefer. So this is marketed as a full size, a 15 plus one or a 17 plus one with the extendo that comes with it. The total height of this thing from the bottom of that mag to the top of the slide is gonna be 5.2. You're gonna have a width of 1.2, which is very similar to a Glock, whether it's the 19 or the 17. 
a 24.83 ounce weight, which is not bad. Barrel length is that four inches and an overall length of 7.28. So it's got a fixed front sight here, all right? And a driftable rear sight via that set screw, you can drift it over. Manual safety, as you can see there, slide lock here. So now that we know basic specs on it, let's just go over this thing from magwell to muzzle. So you can see down here, you got that flush fit with the 15 round mag right there. You got a nice depression in there so you can strip that mag should you have a problem with ammo. Open bottom like that, very, uh, very normal for striker fired setups. Single sided magazine release there. Moving up into, well, let's show the bigger mag in there. So the larger mag is going to be much more the size of a 17 grip. It's actually quite nice, not bad, feels good in there. So again, you've still got that really nice depression to be able to strip on a mag. You can see right there, thumb fits in there nicely. The texture on this, I gotta say, they nailed the texture. The texture on this Taurus is far superior to say like a Glock. And I know some people are gonna light the comments up over that. The texture just feels a lot better. It's got that very M&P style texture you can see right there all the way around from the front strap to the back strap. It feels nice, it feels good. The size of the overall grip does feel quite good to be able to get that good grip on that thing. It has your little indentations like there. That's not for your thumb to go in there, okay? You're gonna grab like this, that is a good grip on it. A lot of these things people don't understand that they have to put on these things are to meet import laws. It's kind of dumb, but they have to do that stuff. Coming up under the uh, magazine, or <laughs> coming up under the trigger guard right there. It's not bad, it's very Glock-esque, but not quite as thick as a Glock. Moving up, got that single-sided mag release there. Little small, but it does have some texture to it. It's not bad, I found it worked plenty good on the range. Got your manual safety right there. You're going to have your standard striker fired setup of a trigger right here. Good trigger shoe safety. It does go completely flush right there that you can see, which is nice, but it's got a lot of travel on it. A uh, lot of travel. So you do hit a very nice hard wall. Brake is pretty good. You can see that that reset is not bad and then it's got that restrike capability, which we'll get into here in a second. Moving forward, got a nice index point right there for your grip to get on that trigger finger and thumb. You got the multi-slot pick rail up there, not bad at all. Moving back up onto the slide, you got that uh, Tenifer finish, I think I called it Park Rise, it's Tenifer. Typical looking black plate, uh, typical looking white military style three dot sights. Rear serrations, front serrations, nice little red notch right there so you know when the safety is on, when it's not, it does function. Take down lever, coming on the other side, very common looking extractor and barrel. You do have a loaded chamber indicator viewport right there so you can see if there is a round in there. Taurus logos, your serial number, that G3 9 by 19 It's been nicely nosed off, much like a Gen 5 Glock right here very chamfered down into the uh, frame right there to meet it nicely. So overall, not bad, not bad at all. When it comes down to breaking this thing down, make sure the safety is off, clear it out. It's gonna be just like a Glock. Pull the trigger, pull slightly back, pull down on that takedown lever, and then push it forward. The recoil spring, it's gonna be very similar to just about every other recoil spring out there. Standard barrel, the barrel is wearing exactly as what I would expect. Uh, maybe a little premature here on the bottom. You can kind of see a little bit, get the camera zoom in for you. You can see a little bit of excess scarring across the bottom right there where the guide rod is wearing on it. But again, $250 pistol. Up in here, it's going to look very similar to a Glock. You've got your striker block safety right there, which people call that plunger safety your striker assembly, and it's going to come and break down in full, very much so like a Glock. Go ahead and put this back together. And let's talk about how this trigger works. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a tool right here. 
So a couple different things going on here. And I'll try to make sure that uh, the camera is showing really good. Obviously we have that trigger shoe safety right there. So you've got to be depressed. That is the vertical extension of the trigger bar right here. That's what depresses the safety plunger right there and allows the striker to go forward, that piece right there. So as this comes back, it depresses that striker safety plunger and allows that to go down. Let me zoom in here for you guys right here. This is gonna be your sear surface right here. So that's what the striker lug is going to grab onto. As you pull the trigger back, the trigger bar is gonna hit that, drops down, striker goes forward, okay? What you'll notice here, that arm, get the best light I can for you, this arm right here that's moving right there, that is what gives you your restrike capability, okay? So say uh, you're, you're in battery, you're ready to fire, you take that shot, striker goes forward, the round doesn't go. Well, your striker is now up here, so that arm comes, grabs that lug, pulls that lug back, and just before it hits the sear surface here, it drops down slightly, allowing the striker to go forward once again. Interesting design. So as far as the rest of the trigger, the disconnector right here, as you pull that trigger, it's in battery, sear goes down, round goes forward, slide reciprocates, the slide hits the top of the disconnector right here, listen, you hear the pop, the sear comes back up as the slide comes forward, the striker lug grabs the sear and the cycle starts all over again. Put this thing back together. It's going to be just like a Glock. Let's go ahead and do some trigger pulls on this bad boy so you guys know what the weight is. All right, I got my trusty trigger gauge here. I have to say the trigger did clean up very nicely on that second trip to the range. So, my camera never wants to zoom in on this, guys. I apologize because of the light. It's so glaring bad on there. So that is four pounds and six ounces on that one. We'll do three pulls uh, this way. And I always pull low on the trigger because that's where I place my finger, right about there. Uh, that one pulled right at five. Again, I'll do my best to get that zoomed in for you. The lights just never want to work with this yellow tape on here, this yellow colored trigger gauge. I'm gonna get a digital one for you guys, I swear. So last one here, uh, just under five pounds. Okay, so that one is going to be right at four pounds and probably 12 ounces. Let's go ahead and do one on the <laughs> double action thing here. And this is gonna be quite high because it's, it's pretty gnarly. Okay, so uh, about five pounds and six ounces on that one. So not terrible, not great. We'll do one more on that, on the restrike. So you guys have a really good idea. Right about the same place. So five pounds and four ounces on that one. In all, performed pretty good out there. Let's go ahead and talk more about the range footage. Let's talk about my overall feelings here. If this is of value for you at the price point and did it cycle on the ammo and is this thing reliable and worth carrying? Well, that is a very interesting trigger set up there with those restrike capabilities. Now, right out of the box, I'm going to say I would never use the actual restrike on it. If that round didn't go off the first yank of the trigger, I want that round out of there and I want to move on to the next one. And if you really think about it between tap racking, getting a new fresh round in there and trying to restrike and then having a tap rack, you're gaining time on one over the other. So just getting rid of that round and going back after it is gonna be the route that I'm gonna take. I'm not gonna use the restrike thing at all. And that's just me and kind of how I train. Now talking about the ammo out there, I used 124 grain Spear Gold Dot, I used G2, I used uh, 119 or no, 115 grain, uh, Stellar and Bell at 115 grain mag tech, 115 grain reload stuff. And I did use some tool ammo steel case stuff. Every single round went right through that thing with no problems at all. In fact, my first experience out there, uh, especially having cleaned it a couple times, that second range trip out there, 
punched it out, and this is what I had to say. It's not terrible, dude. It's not terrible. <laughs> Dude, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not terrible, dude. I'm telling you, it's not fucking terrible. I'm kind of surprised. Now, keeping in mind that I paid $240 for this in December of 2020, where prices are absolutely all over the place in the dumpster fire that has been this year, I found out that I was pleasantly surprised from the grip angle to the grip texture the ability to work this from the back or from the front with the serrations. Uh, the safety, the manual safety doesn't affect me. I'm used to 1911s or other uh, setups that have safeties there. It was just a matter of keeping that mental note, even though this is a striker fired setup, that I had to manipulate that safety each time I was either coming out of the holster or putting it back in the holster. So I ran this thing exactly like I would run a Glock or an MMP or an FN or anything else here on my channel. I wanted to see what it was going to look like doing drills, doing reloads, doing all the stuff that I would use this thing for. Now I have to say the Taurus G3 absolutely surpassed my expectations and I was not expecting that. Even my buddy that was out on the range with me that day, he took a couple of mags through his thing and was just like, wow, that's, that's not bad at all. Because we had heard things or read things or people had just kind of bashed on it and talked about the pores. Now I love a savage meme out there. And oftentimes people may want to justify a purchase that they made because something wasn't the best. But again, we have to remember when it comes to a sub $300 setup, we're dealing with people that probably don't have the opportunity, ability, or training that are going to go into something like an H&K or an M&P or anything else like that. They are needing something to fulfill a very specific need. So comparing this to a thousand dollar FN or something else of that nature just isn't really going to be fair. Now that being said, the one thing I will say that trigger is like a bad Tijuana road trip. It is so long and that has to do with how they built in that restrike capability. It's an interesting design like we showed up close there. Overall, the trigger itself working like a Glock trigger if you know how to work it not bad at all, however, that initial take up is definitely a long road trip to get to that wall. Again, one of the things I suggest right out of the box, get in there and do a deep clean on that at least two times in a week. The reason I say that is the quality control coming in a $240 pistol is not going to be that of an FN or a Glock or a Smith & Wesson or anything like that. They're going to coat those parts, they're going to put them out there, throw the thing together, and they're going to ship it off right in that box. There was a lot of excess material in there. There was a lot of extra grease in there. All that stuff needs to come out of there. You need to clean it up really good and really lubricate those points very nicely in there at least twice. Doing that, getting it on the range, another deep cleaning really made the difference in this. Initially, that thing felt like it was full of sand. I mean, it felt like it had sandpaper on the rails when I first got it out of the box. A couple deep cleanings and a few hundred rounds very impressive how it broke in that quickly. Now, that's just something that we need to understand when it comes to a $240 rig, you're not getting the best quality control. Now, as far as the sights on it, they're usable. The coating, it's parkerized. It's gonna last, it's going to wear, but it's going to be as durable as most people are going to need. As far as the trigger goes, we've discussed that. The safety on it, it's hit or miss. You may be into safeties, you may not be into safeties. Some people like to have an external safety or a manual safety on everything they own. And I can understand that, especially if you have kids around the house. Now getting the 17 round mag and the 15 round mag is nice. You get the full pick rail. It comes pretty nicely optioned for what it is, especially considering that price point. Now that reliability was definitely there. I didn't have a single malfunction or issue with all of those different ammo types from the plus P stuff all the way to the cheap tool ammo steel. That's definitely nice because I was been told or I had heard that these things do not like the steel K stuff. That was not my experience with it. Now with all that being said, and I know the comment section is going to light up, I don't have a problem with the Taurus G3 at all. Thus far in my testing with it, I found it to shoot nice. I could run it just fine out there. The angles were clean, the grip was good, and it flat out worked on all of the ammo that I put through it. 
I think for $240, it's actually an exceptional value. Now, people always want to ask the question of, would I trust my life to it? I have to say, at this point, it has not given me a reason not to trust my life to it. Would I carry it every day? I don't know. I don't have a holster for it, and I've got plenty of other things that I carry, so that's not really uh, my thing there. But for someone who is in that sub $300 market, I don't think it's a bad choice. Again, I picked up this G3 and the G3C for under 550. That's cheaper than a Glock 19. I am still going to, however, do some long-term testing with this. I am really interested to see when I get to that thousand round mark on this, what it's feeling like, how it's performing, and definitely how it is wearing in. If you guys have that experience with it, definitely let us all know in the comments down below because I am very interested to hear what your round counts are and what your experiences have been with the Taurus G3. And of course, always remember, like I said up front, not all of us are in the same financial position and not all of us are as fortunate as others, but we all deserve and have the right to some form of self-defense. At this point, the Taurus G3 for me has proven reliable and it has proven durable and it has proven extremely cost effective if you were in that sub $300 market. I hope you guys enjoyed learning about the G3 and getting my opinion on it. Some of you may not have been expecting that, which is what I've already been told by some friends, but it is what it is. Looking at it objectively, it's not the problem child that I heard it has been. But then again, this is a test group of one for me. Although my G3C video is gonna be coming out fairly soon and I've had zero problems with that as well. I hope you guys enjoyed that. You guys get out there, have some fun on the range. Remember, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. And I will see you guys on the next one.